Why do we dream? Hey Crash, today we're going to talk about dreams. More specifically, the possible reasons why we dream and what dreams mean. Wow, that's so weird. I actually had the craziest dream last night and wanted to ask you what it meant. Cool. What was it about? I dreamt that I was giving a speech in front of a whole bunch of people naked. Well, see, that's actually an example of a universal dream, a dream which spans cultures and seemingly pops up in many people. Most psychologists agree that being naked in front of people represents a feeling of being inadequate, either professionally or socially. No, 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 no! I wasn't naked, everybody else was. And they were all fighting to get on stage with me. It was kinda fucking awesome. Oh, in that case, the dream probably means you're a delusional egomaniac. Though I didn't need a dream to tell me that. Yet people for literally millennia have tried to read into the meaning behind dreams, dating as far back as the Sumerians of Mesopotamia in 5000 BC. These people believed that dreams were messages sent from gods to help humans. The ancient Egyptians in 3000 BC carried on many of these beliefs, having special dream interpreters who would decode these messages. That'd be the best job ever! You'd get people telling you all their dirty dreams and then at the end you can say, I think the dream means you should give me your camel. And they couldn't argue with you! That's because you're a creep with no boundaries. And racist against Egyptians, I think? Oh, I'm sorry. And you're telling me these dream interpreters were actual legit professionals? Well, probably not. Now I think about it, they did promote an ancient Egyptian dwarf god known as Bess, who promoted fertility by bestowing erotic dreams upon people. Awesome. See, I always felt like I was born in the wrong generation. All these kids are walking around with their faces buried in smartphones. Clearly I was meant to be born in ancient Egypt. They could have carved a sphinx with my face on it. Ancient Greece was pretty cool too. Artemidorus wrote a whole book on dream interpretations known as the Onera Critica. The book has become the basis for many modern dream theories. The Oracle of Delphi, Pythia, carried on the role of Egyptian dream interpreters by viewing dreams as prophecies. However, there was also the beginning of understanding dreams as being related to physical and mental health. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, was one such proponent of this idea. Hippocrates also means horsepower, so, you know... That's pretty fucking awesome! Just cruising along in my Ferrari with my homeboy Hippocrates! Hey, Crash? Yes, Culture? You're an idiot. Ancient Roman culture continued down this line of reasoning with scholars theorizing that dreams are based on our real experiences and emotions. Thus, dreams started to diverge from being heavenly messengers and began being seen as insights into the human psyche. Oh no, I I know where this is going. Please, don't bring him into this. Like, I messed up, but this guy is too far gone even for me. I have to do it, Crash. I'm sorry. I really am. Sigmund Freud. No! <laughs> Fucking Sigmund Freud. Known as the father of psychoanalysis, was naturally very interested in what dreams might say about people's subconscious desires. And boy, did he have some disgusting thoughts about symbols in dreaming. Ever dreamt about oblong objects or the number three? Well, you might have male genitalia on your mind. Ever ridden a horse in a dream? Maybe you're, uh. Crash, help me out here. Desperate for some action? Yeah, that'll do. These aren't certain scientific deductions, but rather his ideas based on experience with clients. Carl Jung, a student of Freud's, instead took this in a less perverted direction with his idea of individuation, that dreams attempt to integrate the conscious and unconscious lives that we lead. Put another way, Freud believed that dreams concealed our dark secrets with symbols, whereas Jung believed that our dreams instead revealed our thoughts through mythic narratives and imagination. So that dream I had of flying on that giant penis monster was just my awesome imagination. I knew it. I really want to stop and unpack that, but the last thing I need is you breaking down in the middle of an episode. The point is that in either of these cases, the dreams mean something and can help us uncover our desires, fears, etc. We already looked at one example of a universal dream, but others include being chased, which means running from undesirable past memories, or being unable to produce your ID, which may mean struggling with your personal identity. Or my penis monster thing. Like, you know, just one of those things everyone thinks about. No. Just no. So let's get more scientific with this. What is a dream exactly? Where does it occur in our brain? Christine Marzano and her colleagues at the University of Rome conducted a study which found that low-frequency theta waves in the prefrontal cortex were a common feature in subjects who were able to remember their dreams. 
Interestingly, this is the same response seen when retrieving autobiographical memories while awake. You use the word interestingly very loosely. Furthermore, via MRI studies, it can be seen that emotionally intense or vivid dreams are linked to the amygdala and hippocampus, implicated in emotional response memory formation and long-term memory formation respectively. Both components are also involved in the fear response, as you might remember from our Can We Overcome Our Fears video. Can you stop shamelessly plugging our own content? They're already here. They don't need the hard sell. Fair enough. My bad. We can also learn a lot about dreams by looking at people who don't experience them. Patients with charcot wilbrand syndrome cannot dream, among other things, due to brain damage to areas essential for revisualization. Furthermore, a patient was reported as having lost the ability to dream after suffering a lesion to her right inferior lingual gyrus. There's no way you know what that is. In fact, I don't think you know what you're talking about ever. Crash, don't call me out on this. It's bad for business. No! I'm taking a stand. This is about the integrity of academic pursuit, the faith that our viewers place in us to provide them with the truth, and you, you sir, Bit in the faces of these things! I will not stand idly by while you deface the name of Culture Crash! Do you really want me to bring up your dream again? <clears throat> Carry on. So anyway, where dreams occur isn't exactly our main focus. What we really want to know is why we have dreams. That is to say, what evolutionary function do they serve? The activation synthesis hypothesis states that dreams are formed from random electrical brain impulses that draw from memories and thoughts, and that only upon waking up do we weave these impulses into a story. But this theory is largely disagreed with by experts. Threat simulation theory states that repeated activation of neurological pathways required in the event of a threat allows for better threat perception and avoidance while awake. For example, in the dream of being chased, our mind must choose where to run to, and failure in the dream scenario has lower stakes than in real life. A little bit like playing a video game. Yet another theory states that dreams help us to better understand emotions. Matthew Walker and his colleagues at UCB Sleep and Neuroimaging Lab found that less REM sleep and dreaming made it harder for subjects to understand complex emotions while awake. So, which one is correct? STOP MESSING WITH MY HEAD CULTURE! The thing is, we're still not sure. That's why dreams seem so mystical to us. Nightmares are better understood, generally being linked to past trauma or scary events such as a horror movie. They are especially prevalent in teenagers due to the quickly developing interconnections in the adolescent brain. But I read sites all the time that tell me what my dreams mean. They have to be rooted in science, right? Don't take this away from me! Moi. What sorts of sites? Like dreammoods.com. They have a dream dictionary, which I might say is on fucking point. They catalog symbols and dreams and what they represent. You need to see some of the truth they're showing us. Like, you ever dream about abalone? Abalone? Like sea snails? No, I can't say I ever have. That surprises me since they represent loneliness and you're the loneliest guy I know. Oh, I see. This is just another way to insult me. What about yetis? Any yetis? They represent needing to find a balance between your rational and your emotional side, which I figure you'd need since you're such a lonely nerd. Give me that. This book says that xylophones mean you need to be more environmentally conscious. How the hell does that make sense? Hey, I trust fully in the experts at dreammoods.com. Oh my god. You're working for them, aren't you? This is just one big advertisement. You snake. You sneaky snake. I have no shame culture. Haven't you learned this by now? When I'm counting my cash later, we'll see who sits on top. We'll see who's on top in our Rule 34. What does it say in there about disgusting earwax sculptures? Does it say that makes you a weirdo? It says it makes you cool and better than other people. People like you. And that wasn't a dream. Stop wishing it was. <sighs> It's times like this I wish I could just escape by lucid dreaming about a world in which you're normal. What's lucid dreaming? Lucid dreaming is essentially when you're in a dream, yet you are also aware that you're in a dream. Once in this state, it's possible to manipulate your environment at will. Various experts have attempted to perfect this technique, enabling them to enter this state whenever they want. Whoa, whoa, so I can do whatever I want? I could punch you in the face? I mean, that's not exactly imaginative. You could do that in real life. I can? Thanks, friend! Oh! Wow, I can't believe how much I hate you right now. What I meant is that you could fly over landscapes, become anyone you want, or meet anyone you want. Like Kim Kardashian? I would have picked you as more of a Ryan Gosling type. But yeah, technically you could. It's not real, of course, but to your mind it can feel real, and much more vivid than a normal dream. 
One of the key techniques for inducing lucid dreaming is keeping a dream journal. This involves writing down every dream you have as soon as you wake up, since it supposedly makes you more easily remember your dreams and realise common themes. Sounds sort of lame, like people who keep a diary. Crash, you're not fooling anyone. I know you keep a diary. What? How did you know? Because it's not a diary. It's Twitter. When I told you that Twitter is a site for locking up your ideas securely, I thought I was being pretty obviously sarcastic. Then once you started tweeting out, it was just too funny to stop you. You bastard! My secrets! And people wonder why I don't like you! It's okay, Crash. The one thing no one can steal from you is your dreams. Dreams are a sacred space in which our minds can roam freely. And I think that's why we're all so interested in them. Why we want to know about other people's dreams and why we want to understand our own. But ultimately, it's important to face reality and realize our dreams in our real lives. What comfort is this to me?! Everyone knows my secrets now! Oh yeah, you're screwed for sure. Anyway, let us know about crazy dreams you guys have had in the comments down below. Follow Culture Crush on social media!